Hey everyone, so I'm here at Wright's Ranch in Cottonwood, Arizona. And you know, I'm out here for ClayCon West and then I did the great grand tour where I went to the Grand Canyon and everything. And, and I've done, a, checking out a little bit of pottery, but I'm here at the Wright's Ranch, which was Don Wright's studio here. And I'm gonna give you a tour. So here's the facility right here. And we're gonna go in and the director's gonna give us a little tour of the place. And it's amazing, you know, here it is. January and it's just an unbelievable sunny day. It's so gorgeous here and it's a nice change for me from Vermont because you know we get lots of snow here. Just blue skies and bright sun. So let's get started and check out the Wrights Ranch. So here we have some of Don's porch pots they call it and these are just pieces that you know like many of us potters have that you know, they're not good enough to sell, but you don't want to get rid of them either. Some of these gorgeous large pieces. And this here, that's Winnie. She's one of the dogs in residence here. And some more Don's porch pots. And we're gonna go inside and we're gonna meet Ben Roti. So we're gonna go inside and meet Ben. So let's go ahead and go in and meet Ben. So we're coming on in. So here we are. So this is the front room. This was the original part of the studio. When Don built, bought this property, this building was a ranch bunkhouse, ranch hand bunkhouse, and he rebuilt that. And so now this is the first room when you walk in, but check out the pots. Some really lovely pieces here. How's it going? It's good. How you doing? Good. You guys out for a tour visit? We are. You know, we're filming it, so we're going to be putting this up. Some more of Don's pieces. And just <laughs> scan around the room. So this is the, um, you know, first room and office now. It is what? The entryway oh, slash yeah, office. office. So let's go on into the studio. And let's go see if we can find Ben, and he'll give us a, a little, a little tour. You can just see. Winnie's gonna give us a tour. So there's some throwing wheels here. Just just a little pot. Just a small one over here. So there's a nice work table. And so there's Ben. Say hi to everybody, Ben. So Ben's gonna give us a little tour of everything and we're gonna talk a little bit. I've already been through once, but he's gonna give us a brief walk through. Um, so this space here is where the hand building Yeah, this is, is one of our two classrooms. Mm -hmm. When Don purchased the property in 1988, he actually uh, bought five acres, which included the house that's up above and the studio that's down below here. When he purchased it, the uh, ceiling was all caved in, the walls were pushed over, and over the 25 years, the remaining years of his life, he worked on rebuilding this studio down here to actually use it as his personal studio. Uh, when Ted and Cheryl purchased the property in 2017, they worked on converting it into a community clay studio. So we had the vision that we could be teaching classes and workshops and also having memberships out here. So we actually have uh, a membership base that uh, our members have 24 hour access to the studio. Uh, and what that means is if we have a class that's being taught in one classroom, we have a mirrored classroom on the other side so that we can actually host uh, memberships and classes at the same time. Um, so we have two classrooms in this facility uh, that is split between the two rooms. Uh, and our second classroom back here, which wound up being Don's main studio, uh, when the remaining years of his life, uh, this was his personal studio, very large studio that has changed quite dramatically since his passing. Uh, but we have kind of this similar layout of a few hand building tables, a uh, few wheels in each room, slab rollers, uh, and anything that someone might need to kind of get themselves started. Right, so I get a lot of requests for um, designs for hand building tables and right here this is a large one but you can do a smaller scale and it's just covered with some canvas and it's a really great great surface and so I'll get some shots you all can see how this is built right here and you know there's storage underneath for bats 
and anything else. And of course, a Bailey slab roller, like similar to the one that I have in my studio. Actually, I actually think I have that same model, but you know, a nice big slab roller. So if you want to hand build, you're ready to go. This is great. Yeah. And the tables as well, when we actually, when Don was using them, there was a large uh, shelf that went all the way across. And a lot of our members like to sit at the table and work. And it was really, it, it was kind of the shin buster. You would mm. hit your knees each time you went to go sit down. So we cut that down so that there's actually a little space under here. So when you right. sit, That's it's a lot nice. more comfortable. You're not actually hitting, hitting yourself it. each time yeah. you go. That's but it a, still provides storage It's a really good design. If you're thinking for your own home studio, you could cut this in half. And you would still have a plenty big work table. And I see that you use drywall we do. with taped edges for your for your work boards. Yes, so we are a nonprofit, and we actually just had someone that was doing a remodel of their home, and they actually brought a bunch of scraps out. So we prepared them by taping the edges, cutting them down, taping the edges to avoid getting any, any of that drywall plaster and our clay. Uh, and we just provide those for our members and people that are taking classes. They're excellent wear boards, and everyone here really appreciates using them. So you just, you know, use regular masking tape, tape off your edges, and away you go. Fabulous. Yeah, that's great. So the ranch also has a residency program, and the room back here, which used to be Don's kiln room. He had a couple large electric kilns, and pretty much everything that we are about to tour today was stuffed back in this room. He intended for it to be a wood shop, uh, but as any potter knows, it, you need places to pack, you need places to kind of store work, and this became a large storage area. But uh, we decided that we'd like to begin or start a residency program. So we have both short and long-term residencies. Uh, currently, we have one resident, uh, Grayson Fair, who just arrived in October. So for this us. is Grayson's work it, over here. Yes, Grayson These came large to cultures. us from Taos. Uh, New Mexico, uh, and he's doing some large sculptures, some functional work, kind of thrown and altered work as well, uh, but we're gearing up for a wood firing tomorrow, and so he's got a bunch of work in kilns and kind of in progress that he's been working real hard to be able to fill our train kiln that we're firing tomorrow. So Grayson's one of your resident artists right now, and your oh, other one correct. is over Jeff here? Jeff Heeg is Jeff. our other uh, resident artist. He actually comes to us from Phoenix, and he's been able to build uh, kind of a part-time residency with us, where he actually resides in Phoenix, but comes up about three to four days a week to come and work with us up here and give us an extra hand. Uh, and in exchange for that, he has a studio space. He's been doing some large sculptural work and functional work as well, but utilizing a lot of the atmospheric kilns that we have available on the property. What a view to work with. You know, it's sit here and look out there. Pretty incredible. Wow. That's so amazing. Jeff's about a year, maybe a year and a few months. He came uh, to us about December of last year. Um, so he, he will continue to work. We decided to uh, offer the extension for Jeff to continue for another year. So typically we have a one year residency with the uh, intention to continue for another year. And as I mentioned, Grayson's in his first, first year with us. And then this space is actually just uh, turned over. We just had a visiting artist by the name of Heather Spontak who came uh, to us uh, from Odyssey Clayworks. Okay. Um, and she stayed with us for about two months. She lived on the property. She actually came self-contained, so it was really easy. Um, she set up in this space, and we intend to kind of keep using this as like a continual visiting artist. So somebody that is maybe coming through for a shorter period of time to be able to come and actually utilize the studio space here. So if someone wants to become a resident artist, what do they do? How do they the, apply? The best way to go about that is to probably either contact us through our website. Uh, we actually do have a residency page on our website. Uh, one of the menu options that are up above and it's just going to kind of describe a little bit about what we offer with our residency but primarily it would be uh, just emailing us and getting in contact to kind of start the conversation about how to become a resident out here okay good and we'll put that up with this video i'll put the link up to the Excellent. website 
And then glaze room here. So this is the glaze room. This actually, when Don was out here, was an open patio. And myself and Larry Maher, who is right here. This is Larry, hey. who is oh. one of Don's last assistants. Uh, we actually helped Don enclose this space and turn it, it from a covered patio into a uh, rest studio assistant space. Um, and when Ten Show purchased property, we desperately needed a glaze room. And so this became the glaze room uh, for the whole studio. So we have a bunch of cone ten glazes. A lot of our members like to test little glazes. So we have smaller batches underneath. But we actually just took a real basic kind of shelf shelving unit that you can buy at Home Depot. Just cut some holes in the top and drop the five gallon buckets in there. That's brilliant. Kind of make some <laughs> impromptu glaze. Yeah, this is great. Glaze shelving. So you just put your hole in, and then you can drop your bucket in, and then it's so easy to get, you know, dip your pots into the glaze and everything. That's fabulous. It's at a great great height that we have available. Little note board. Some storage of dry materials. Yeah. I'm gonna peek in the, let's peek in. See, big enough to fit the whole bag in. Not pouring the bag out, which I like. Some are poured in. Some, Some are poured in. Whole bags, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Some more glaze storage, dry material storage. A lot of old colorants from Don. Lots of lots of pieces and gems left behind from Don out here. Pretty historical yeah. place. Come out here to this little patio area. So this would have been the most recent addition that we actually have on the property. Uh, this actually is a kiln room. Everything sure. that's in this room here uh, was originally in that little resident artist space. So we desperately needed an area for all of our members to be able to move work. Uh, so we have our in-progress shelves, gets loaded into our electric kiln. We just relocated one of our little kilns and we'll be getting a new one in this corner here. Uh, but primarily we do all of our bisking in here and we are a high fire studio. So we don't have any mixtures of mid fire range or low fire, um, primarily because of the large kilns that are down below. If any of the other temperatures were to contaminate or get into our clays, we could have some major problems down in the atmospheric kilns. Yes, definitely. So as the works come out of the in progress, uh, they go through the bisque. Bisque work gets stored here. Members take them into the glaze room. We'll go ahead and glaze them in there and then actually store them on our glaze shelf uh, and then get loaded <laughs> into our little guile kiln that we have and fire pretty routinely. I'd say about once, if not twice a week, mm -hmm. we're firing a dial cone, cone 10 reduction. Yeah, and I get asked a lot about workflow and the best way to organize a space, and this is a really great example of a well-organized kiln room because you have the raw ware ready, the kiln that's gonna be bisked in, and then the ware comes over here where then it will be glazed and then brought back into the kiln here, and then as Cheryl was showing us, the ready to be glazed pieces sit there, go in the kiln, and they're, and they're done. Ta da! Ta da! It's like magic. And then we take them up front so everybody can look at them. That's right. Fabulous. Before they pick them up. So we can head on back through here. We may walk around this edge. And you go on down to where all the kilns are, where all the wood fire kilns. So one of the things that was requested by Cher Ted and Cheryl when they purchased the property was that some of the porch pots or leftover pots would be to remain on the property. Mm -hmm. So when Don was here, all of these pieces were scattered throughout the property. And this is an open range area that we're actually on, this ranch out here. So we'll have horses and cattle and everything that come through. And we found that a lot of those horses and cattle were damaging a lot of the pieces. They're not as careful around these ceramic pieces as we are. So we right. decided to kind of relocate as much as we can up against the studio. Kind of is a nice little way to uh, immortalize Don, keep a lot of his pieces preserved the best that we can out here and have them around for not only our residents, but anyone that takes a class or a workshop, they can come and actually physically touch and see how Don handled the clay. That's a fabulous resource to have for people to come out you know, and be able to see his pieces. Yeah. So we're gonna take a walk down here to the kiln sheds? Yes. 
So when Don purchased the property, this was all just bare land. And it's really what I like to tell people, it's pretty amazing to think that at the age of 65, when you retire, you take on such an endeavor to build everything that we have seen today. Uh, he spent the last 25 years of his life building a personal studio and everything that he would need for that studio. So we have the kiln shed down here. And one of the first kilns we'll look at is the salt kiln as Don was known and throughout his career as uh, the king of salt in the 70s and 80s. Uh, so the first kiln that Don built when he purchased property was this salt kiln, uh, which is just over 25, uh, coming up on 30 years old now. Um, and it's a very large kiln to house some of Don's very large work inside the kiln. And you can notice in the back there, there's a hole all the way through the exit flue. That's because when Ted and Cheryl purchased the property, we decided to retire this kiln. It's had several, several hundreds, if not thousands of firings. Uh, and by retiring the kiln, we decided to tear down the stack, uh, but keep the remainder of the kiln, all of the juicy salt on the inside. Yeah, that's gorgeous, all that salt build, build up in there. Look at that. And we actually utilize the stack to build this kiln over here, which is our soda kiln. So, so this little kiln here was built from the stack, which is what is the chimney, basically. Exactly. This kiln came from the chimney. Correct. That's wonderful. So all the hard brick that's actually in this kiln is from that stack. Uh, and the soft brick, as you can see, that's kind of the insulation brick on the exterior of the kiln, is all from repurposed uh, electric kiln brick. Uh, both three and two and a half inch electric kiln brick to kind of create the design of this kiln uh, and skin and insulate that, all of that together. It's a good size kiln. It's perfect. This, we fire pretty regular, regularly about... You say 16 two, or...? Uh, 16 cubic foot. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, perfect. that's a good guess, good shot. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so we fire this, I would say, once a month, if not twice a month mm -hmm. right now. And we offer this as just a small charge, about $25 per cubic foot uh, for our members or anyone that's interested in trying atmospheric firing. Um, we also do kiln rentals. So people that are interested in renting out kilns, they can come uh, bring a crew, bring work, uh, and rent out the kilns to fire their own work. Um, this was Don's second kiln. This is actually a Bori box. It's a wood-fired kiln. The wood's loaded into this chamber on the side here. And then uh, the flame actually travels across. It's a cross-draft kiln going out the stack that is also missing on this kiln. That is because <laughs> we're in process of tearing this kiln down to rebuild a much smaller wood kiln that our members uh, can utilize or the community can utilize. It's a little bit more of a achievable size versus this very, very large, which worked perfect for Don's so large big. sculptures. Uh, but a lot of our members are making a lot smaller work and it's somewhat intimidating to fill such a large kiln. Right. So we're gonna be repurposing the brick to build a much smaller kiln in its footprint to make available to our members in the community. And this and is the third here. kiln that was built uh, with Don. This is actually a train kiln, John Neely's design. Uh, Don built this kiln, I believe in the early 2000s uh, and we actually fire this most regularly. It's a 70 cubic foot train kiln. The wear chamber's in the middle stack here. I can take this down for you so you can see. We're actually getting ready to fire this kiln tomorrow. Um, we have Heidi Krychek who's coming out to fire this kiln with a group of people including our resident artists. Um, but this kiln fires for about two days. It's about a 40 hour firing in total. Uh, and that's around the clock. So we have people that will be loading wood up into this chamber up here, the firebox up above, there's some grates. So the wood stays up inside there. And as that flame passes down, so does the fly ash. It moves through the kiln, cross draft as well, escaping out through the stack or the chimney on the opposite end. So the wares in the middle will be glazed from the wood ash uh, and the atmosphere that's provided from the wood in the kiln. 
And this is actually one of uh, the kilns that we use. We're actually hosting an annual event out here called Women's Wood Firing. Uh, we started it actually in October and we hope to continue that every year. Uh, last year, Heidi Krychek and Rena Hamilton came out to do a two day long firing where we had ladies from all across the Southwest region come out and fire. Uh, wood firing can be a rather intimidating process and we wanted, Cheryl was really interested in breaking down a lot of those barriers to allow ladies to come on out and actually fire these kilns together that, building building a community amongst each other that's wonderful and you're going to do it again this october we, so we are if we have people plans want to, to find out about it you'll have it on your website and everything and, and you know you let me know and i'll share it out in time for people to sign up excellent too. So. yeah so we do a newsletter that we like to announce a lot of those things as they come up um, and that will definitely be announced when we get a little bit closer, but it's going to be a yearly thing that happens in October. So uh, October 2020, we'll host our okay. next. Okay. Uh, so wood keep that in mind. Here. The women's wood fire in October. Come to Arizona. Yeah. It must be gorgeous here in October. It's beautiful. This is actually a really nice time. It's been a beautiful few days out here um, in this in this area, but this is a, a small sprung arch kiln. Uh, that we have and unfortunately it's boarded up because we've got some work that's being stored in there for the firing that's happening in a few days. Mm -hmm. um, we are, as I mentioned, open range and the cattle and animals don't really see poverty <laughs> as uh, an obstacle that they They'll go right in the avoid. kiln. So we block it off so that they can stay somewhat protected, uh, keep out most uh, of the animals. Right. Um, but this kiln is a, about a two day firing, 48 hour firing, and it's a very achievable, workable size for the community members and is fired pretty routinely out here. So all the kilns that we've been looking at in here are about a two day, 48 hour firing so far. Except for the soda Except kiln. Except for the soda. Yeah, the soda is gas fired, so that one can be fired a in the day. Fun. Yeah. Um, but it is still in our atmospheric kiln. And then the largest kiln that we have on the property is an Anagama style kiln. Uh, and it's actually dubbed the Wrightsagama for the late Don Wrights. Um, and this kiln is a 15 foot long kiln. Uh, it takes about 800 pieces. Actually, the last time we fired it, we counted 840 pieces that came wow. out of this kiln. Uh, and it fired for five days in 2017. Um, so it's one of the kilns that I like to say it takes a village to fire. Um, we don't have as frequent of plans to fire this one. We actually are looking at maybe 2020 in the fall of 2020 to be firing this with our resident artists and some of the community members that are here. But we do have Chris Gustin on the schedule to come out in 2021 to actually fire this with us and host a workshop out here where people can come and bring work and learn how to fire uh, this style of kiln. So Mark your uh, calendars for yes. 2021. Yeah. Chris Gustin. Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah, that'll be great. And so over here you have an Airstream and another camper. That's for the resident artists? Correct. That's where they stay. So Correct. There's so, so Grayson's actually staying in the Airstream, um, and that's our permanent kind of long term. The other trailer that's here was brought down by someone and is available for people that come to mm -hmm. do workshops. Uh, they can just lay their head at night. Um, and if we have a temporary resident artist that's coming through, we actually set them up in there for a little while so that they have a place to lay their head and get ready for the day in the studio. And the view. This is, <laughs> this is what it's all about, for sure. So one of the most spectacular things, there's an eagle going across right there. Wow, that's One amazing. One of the most spectacular things is to be actually firing the wood kilns in the middle of the night. I, being Don's assistant and being the youngest one that was out here at the time, I would always get put on the, the midnight <laughs> shifts. Uh, but it's something that I really enjoyed because there's absolutely no ambient light out here. Um, you can see just millions of stars up above wow. and to hear this river flowing which is one of the only natural flowing rivers in the state of Arizona uh, right in our backyard and every day at 1 20 and 4 20 the train actually goes by there's a tourist train I think it's the oh. spirit of the birdie uh, that goes by and most of the tour guides are educated that there's a famous potter that used to live out here and point out and whenever we're firing don would always Come encourage out. us to <laughs> shove a 
big scope into the kiln so there's tons of smoke coming out and go and wave to everybody <laughs> as they go by, by on, the, on train. the train that's wonderful so you know here at Wright's Ranch you are honoring the legacy of Don Wright's and you are offering classes for the community workshops for people to come you have visiting artist programs you have the woman's wood fire that you just started up and then you know you have the Anagama workshop in all kinds of atmospheric kiln firings and it's just such a great resource for the community and potters in general and I am honored to be able to come out here thank you so much Ben thank you thank you thanks and for showing us us around it has been a pleasure and everyone out there if you get the chance to come to Arizona you know maybe you'll make this the reason you come to Arizona is go to rightsranch.org their website and I'll post that with this video so you can find that link easily but you can sign up for a workshop you know if you live in the area and you always wanted to come check it out you know reach out to them and go check it out look at this this is amazing the view and all the resources here you really can't ask for anything more thank you thank you all right, so there you have it, the tour of Wright's Ranch. Thanks so much to Ben for showing us all around and sharing this amazing place with all of us. I will put all the links, like I said before, with this video so you can find everything. Um, this, this place is magical. If you ever get a chance to come out here, I do suggest you, you, you just take some time, come out here, check out their website, find out when they have workshops and see if you can work into your schedule. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, everyone, until next time, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you make lots of great pots.